Hi everyone, I'm Richard and this is the big one. The Titan X Pascal is the recent surprise release from Nvidia, establishing its domination of the GPU high-end with a product that's even faster than the GTX 1080, a card for which AMD currently still has no answer. So in effect, Nvidia is outdoing itself here and yes, charging a small fortune for the privilege. GTX 1080 was pricey enough at $600, so yeah, Titan X doubles that. And of course, you don't get a 2x performance leap to match your cash outlay, but what you do get, well, it's fast. It's really fast. Of course it is, but the actual look of the card, well, the Titan X Pascal retains the design language of Nvidia's Premium 10 series products, but carries over the black metallic stylings of the last gen Maxwell Titan. Connectivity? Well, nothing new here. It's Nvidia's standard lineup of HDMI 2.0, three display ports, and a dual link DVI. Realistically though, what more do you actually need? So we've got a 250 watt TDP here, so that's why we have one eight pin and one six pin power input along with those SLI fingers. So inside, we have the new GP102 processor with its 12 billion transistors. There's 3,584 CUDA cores, which compares against GTX 1080's 2560. There's 96 ROPs and 480 gigabytes per second of G5X memory bandwidth, spread out over a 384-bit memory bus. Boost clocks are rated at 1531 megahertz, but actual in-game performance is typically much higher. In short, Titan by name, Titan by nature. But it's the performance you're here for, right? Well, Titan X results are very interesting. There's a trend to the boosts you're going to get, but also some curious anomalies. But let's get straight to it. The Division 4K Ultra, 29% faster than GTX 1080. It's 59% faster than the Fury X, and there's a 61% uptick over the Titan X Maxwell. Assassin's Creed Unity, that's an absolute monster of a GPU workout at 4K. 31% faster than 1080, 77% faster than Fury X, and 68% swifter than the last gen Titan X. So yeah, this gives you some idea of the scaling here. It's usually in the 28 to 30% area at 4K. That said though, there are some curious results. Crisis 3 here, very high 4K. Yeah, a 25% boost here, just a little under in fact. And here's the thing, while the new Titan X has an extraordinary level of power. The fact is that based on Nvidia's numbers, there's only around 25% of additional shading power. There are other aspects to the architecture too, of course, like that insane memory bandwidth. But the fact is that the GTX 1080 is a fully enabled GP104 processor. GP102 in Titan X, well, I get the feeling that it isn't. Nvidia aren't talking numbers, but we're pretty sure that 256 CUDA cores are disabled on this version of the chip. Plus, of course, Larger processors tend to run at lower clocks, further cutting into the differential with the 1080. So yeah, we can expect some lower than usual increases in some places. But on the flip side, of course, there are other big results too. So check out The Witcher 3 here. 4K resolution, ultra settings, hair works off. 33% faster than the GTX 1080, and it leaves every other high-end card on the market for dust. So overall, well, there's not quite the same uptick overall that we saw comparing GTX 1080 to the last-gen Titan X, but by some chalk, Titan X Pascal is still the fastest GPU on the market, and the implications for 4K gameplay here are mouth-watering. But one thing I'd like to highlight is that up until now, Nvidia's drivers have mostly done a great job in accommodating the scale availability of its GPUs, so you still get a good bump to frame rates even at 1080p with GTX 1080, something you don't see so much on the AMD equivalents. Now some might say that the idea of using GTX 1080 or Titan X at 1080p is a monumental waste of GPU power, but there are plenty of high refresh rate monitor owners who might take issue with that. But the fact is that Titan X will bottleneck at lower resolutions. So check this out, Far Cry Primal at 1080p on ultra settings. Now an average frame rate metric will tell you that Titan X is about 22% faster than GTX 1080. But as you can see here with our benchmark showing performance in context, the differential fluctuates to the point where at one point in the benchmark, Titan X is actually as fast as the GTX 1080. And it's a similar story with Crisis 3 here. Average FPS, 20% higher with Titan X installed, but you can see that at 1080, 
GTP, the delta between the new card and the previous GPU king changes according to context. We need some really, really demanding GPU loads at Full HD to show a consistent advantage, like the division on Ultra, for example, 27% faster at 1080p. This title at these settings is a truly insane GPU workout. So let's talk performance and resolution scaling, focusing just on Titan X then. Going back to Far Cry Primal, we've rendered out 1080p versus 1440p versus 4K performance, and you can literally see the choke point where we must surely be hitting either CPU or driver limits. And this is with a Core i7 6700K overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz. So yeah, 1440p upwards, Titan X practically demands it. And here, the differentials versus GTX 1080 look pretty good. So let's go back to the division. 26% uplift at 1440p, rising to 29% at 4K. Far Cry Primal, 27% faster at 1440p, 29% faster at 4K. The Witcher 3, well, that does really love the Titan X. A 29% boost at 1440p, and that rises to 33% at 4K. Nice. Okay, so you want more performance, so let's talk overclocking. The boost clock spec on paper looks pretty weak compared to GTX 1080, but rest assured, the GP102 chip here can easily hit 1.95 gigahertz with an overclocking place. Sustaining that without thermal throttling, well, that's gonna require a better cooling assembly than the one we have here. 4K overclocking is clearly the preferred way to see the card at its best, so check this out. It's the Division, 4K, Ultra, naturally. I've added plus 140 to the core and managed a pretty amazing plus 700 to the G5X RAM. The end result, a 15% frame rate improvement. Rise of the Tomb Raider then. An extra 16% of performance? Why, thank you very much. Some results are less impressive though. Curiously, Assassin's Creed Unity enjoys just an 11% uplift. That's a little surprising as this game has a tendency to soak up whatever shading power and memory bandwidth you throw at it, and it scales very nicely usually. People ask why we still cover this game, and well, that's why. Okay, yeah, so the bottom line is that the overclock is pretty impressive, but given a third-party thermal solution, I reckon we could get a bit more out of the GP102 chip. And the bad news is that just like the Maxwell Titan X, we won't be seeing any custom cooler variants. They'll all use Nvidia's blower design here. After all, it's just Nvidia making it. For those that want the best, no matter what, yes, the Titan X delivers. But I would urge caution if you're considering a purchase. Just remember that behind every Titan is a TI. 980 Ti? Yeah, shave off one or two frames per second, or in some cases, nothing at all, and it's just as good as the last-gen Titan X. Common sense dictates that a 1080 Ti is on the way with very similar performance, and the smart money is on it appearing alongside or just before the launch of AMD's upcoming Vega Uber card. Right, okay then, this is where I sign off for now. Those all important Titan X Pascal benchmarks are up on the channel now, so please do check them out. Putting these together is not a trivial task, but it allows us to understand GPU performance differentials in a way that far exceeds your standard bar chart. Something I hope this review illustrates. So please do like and subscribe to support our work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.